With Fushwin finally being released, that means we are finally able to make a guide on all the things that you possibly need to know in order to build her, use her, and have her at her max potential. Today, we're going to be talking about her light cones, her relics, her traces, all the type of stuff that you possibly need to know in order to get her to where she needs to be. Now, in terms of her kit, we're going to make this a very small portion of the guide just because I'm pretty sure you've heard this a million times from a million different videos. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. With the normal attack, it's just a regular normal attack. There is nothing really special with this. So let's go ahead and talk about the skill, which is probably one of the most important things in her kit. With her skill, you're going to be creating the Matrix of Presidents for three turns, and it's going to give you 65% redirection of your damage to Fu Xuan, with a buff of max HP of 5.2% and a buff to crit rate by 10.5% at level 8. Of course, this could get a little higher if you level up this trace to level 10, but I left it at 8 just because this is normally what people will leave it at if they're not going to high invest in these characters. Now, for the skill, you do want to make sure that when we talk about the relics, which I will get into this in the future, you gotta make sure that Fu Xuan is slow because these three turns are based on Fu Xuan and not your other allies, kind of like how Yu Kong works. It's going to be more so around Fu Xuan and how her speed is. So you kind of want to make Fu Xuan as slow as possible. That way you're able to have your teammates do multiple actions or do what they need to do and have the field up for a longer time than Fu Xuan would normally have if she has a lot of speed. Now talking about her skill, the only con with their damage redirection is that when we talk about using her in AoE situations, she is going to be taking a lot of damage because all of those damages when it comes to your first second and third teammate are going to be redirected onto Fu Xuan and it's a majority of the damage that you would have taken so in AoE situations where you're repeatedly getting hit with it Fu Xuan will get taken in a lot of damage when you are going to be looking at your health and also the wave of enemies that you possibly have because there's times where the low Fu enemies where they have that fire breathing defense down move that's going to shred Fushwin's health like crazy so be mindful of that if you're able to take her out of aoe situations where she's getting multiple hits on a bunch of your allies because all the allies are getting hit by these enemies who are doing aoe kind of want to make sure that you stay away from that she can survive it of course this is footage of me being able to survive this with level 60 units um versus level 90 units and this is a pretty big benefit to Fushwin that she's this tanky but again it is a lot of damage to take in all at once and she can reverse it but you might want to stay away from as much to AoE situations as you possibly can. And another thing is that unlike shielders like Japard and healers like Loja who can cleanse, if you get a debuff of max HP decrease, this is going to heavily hurt Fu Xuan and her team just because there's going to be a lot less leeway in what she can reduce and what she can redirect, especially with how much damage she's going to be taking in and how much damage your allies are going to be taking in. This hurts her a lot. And the fact that she can't cleanse it off, especially if she doesn't already block it with her CC immunity, which we'll talk about later, is going to be a very big no for Fu Xuan. Now talking about her ultimate, the ultimate is going to hit all of the wave and also give Fu Xuan one stack towards her talent. Now regards to her ultimate, I know a lot of people really want to build sub DPS or even DPS Fu Xuan, but the scalings on this ultimate are very, very bad. They are very small for what she's going to have. And the thing that also is kind of sucks is that for people that wanted to build Fu Xuan in a crit damage type of situation, because the scalings are so low, you're not going to really get a lot off of it. If you do want to make her kind of a sub DPS type of character, you might be better off going for break effect which of course that's going to be its own build i don't think that's the most i guess you could say sustainable or most efficient build but it is a fun build that you could play around with now for the talent as long as fushwin is up everyone takes 16 percent less damage in the hp restore stack from the ultimate is used when she is 50 percent or less so basically you're going to have that damage mitigation as long as she's up on the field you don't have to use the skill and then for the hp reverse that you get when you go lower than 50 percent or less that's going to happen as soon as you use your ultimate and you have these stacks that come from it that's why i talked about having a stack from your ultimate when you use it so that's a very cool thing and then the technique makes a barrier you can't get hit while you're in it for 20 seconds and when you enter battle you're gonna be able to go inside the matrix of presidents at the start of battle which is gonna be pretty good for memory of chaos and then her traces are going to be cc immunity once through matrix of presidents so you're going to be able to block cc's one time as long as you have your matrix of presidents up you will be able to refresh this every time you use your skill so this is a really nice thing and then one thing that you have to remember with this cc immunity is that it's one time per character so if you have a minor enemy giving you a debuff like wind shear bleed or something like that and then a bigger enemy comes in and tries to stun you freeze you 
once that little enemy debuffs you and is blocked that other enemy can actually come up and debuff you as well so you have to make sure that you're looking at what type of enemies you're going against this can be taken up very fast with as many enemies that are going to be applying debuffs in the higher stages of content so be mindful of that you can lose it to some small debuff when the bigger debuff comes out and you can get really unlucky with that and it does suck because you have no way to cleanse it with fushwin herself you would have to have another unit do that so make sure to be mindful of that another thing that we do need to talk about is her other traits which is going to give her extra energy when refreshing the matrix of presence while it's still up you do want to do this mainly when it's on his last turn and you'll know when it's in his last turn when the blinking icon of the matrix of presence is going ahead and blinking so this is the best time to be able to use it that way you'll be able to get your energy up being able to use your ultimate and not only that you also will be able to heal with your ultimate which is a small amount because it is only five percent plus 133 but we'll talk about how we're going to be maximizing that in a quick second so with that skill being able to get more energy if your skills already up which you want to use it on the last turn of it being up which is going to be overall what you want to do anyway you're going to be getting that energy you're going to be getting your ultimate quicker and then you're going to be able to heal with your ultimate now the one thing that is really weird is that we do have crit rate traces in her trace network I kind of don't see why this is here. I guess it would have been nice if we could build crit damage Fushuin or make a sub DPS Fushuin. But with their scalings, it's really not going to work. So I have no idea why these are here. She does have HP and effect rest traces, which these are absolutely amazing, especially for her as a tank. So this is really nice. And then another thing for her Eidolons, we're going to talk about all of the Eidolons in a very summarized way. For her E1, crit damage buff of 30% for all allies. This is absolutely insane in all honesty. For E2, each teammate can be res if it's knocked out, but it's going to be only once per battle. This is very strong. This is why Bailu is very strong, and especially in a lot of the content where you're going to get one shot, this is going to be very nice for Fushwin and her team. So being able to res each ally once per battle is going to be really cool. And then E4, when the Matrix is up and the allies get hit, regen 5 energy. Overall, going to make it a lot easier to get your ultimate off, giving you healing and also hurting enemies and shredding those shields. This is overall really cool stuff. And then for E6, it's going to basically allow you to actually run DPS Fushuin because you'll actually have more scaling on your ult. And with this being said, Fushuin can be an absolute monster with their DPS if you're actually able to get E6. So this is all really cool things. I do say E1 is probably the best stopping point for Fushuin if you really want that crit damage buff. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be getting it, but we'll see. Now talking about our light cones, there are in my opinion only three light cones that you could possibly use. One being free to play, one being a four star light cone, and one being her signature of course. Now for her signature is going to be she already shut her eyes, is going to be increasing max HP and energy regeneration rate absolutely insane already when the wearer's hp is reduced which is going to be basically every turn all allies damage dealt increases by nine percent lasting for two turns that is going to be insane damage boost for no reason when it comes to her always taking damage so this will be always active at the start of every wave restore hp already strong already busted especially for simulated universe and especially for memory of chaos so this is a very crazy light cone for fu Xuan. now the other light cone that we could be using is the herda shop light cone which is going to be texture now texture is going to be increasing the wearer's effect rest by eight percent this is going to be helping a lot when if you want to use broken keel this is a very good light cone to look at if the wearer is attacked and has no shield they gain a shield equal to 16 percent of their max hp for two turns it's overall nice she doesn't really need it but in all honesty this is a very nice side effect the only really good thing that i really want to talk about from this light cone is going to be this effect can only be triggered once every three turns if the wearer has a shield when attacked the damage they receive decreases by 12 percent now fushwin as a preservation unit she is going to have more taunt to her so she is going to be able to benefit from this shield and also get a damage reduce from the shield as well which is going to help her last a lot longer it's going to be really nice for her to be able to sustain a bunch of hits so texture is a really nice free to play substitute that is from the herder shop so this is a very nice icon to have on her now you can use landau's choice because this doesn't deal with what i'm about to say which is going to be the wearer is most likely to be attacked which will of course have the damage reduction and then not only that the damage taken is reduced by 16 percent so that's going to even further that damage reduction and make her take little to no damage so this is overall just a really nice icon to have i do recommend if you are going to pull for fu Xuan and you're not going to get her light cone i do recommend in all honesty to go for texture because this is a free-to-play light cone through the herda shop and it's going to be easily superimposable because of course you're going to be able to earn the material you need in the future to be able to superimpose it to five now in regards to defense light cones that i see a lot of people suggesting i know a lot of people are suggesting moment of victory which is japar's light cone and the topic of effective health is something i was not able to test or look at just because i was testing something else in its whole entirety by like i guess you could say an outlier and what a lot of people are going to suggest i have 
have no testing or nor can I disprove the thought of using these defense light cones or the light cones that are going to be coming from the herd shop. So don't mind me. I know I was supposed to test something like that for y'all, but in all honesty, I was just so engrossed in the build I was trying to build that I kind of forgot. So, so for other builds that use defense and actually prioritize that for the effective health topic, go look at other guys because that, you know, I honestly is not something I could have looked at. But in regards to relics, we're going to be seeing what I was cooking up, which I think is the only way to build her in my opinion, just because it gives a lot of sustain for not only Fushwin, but also for her teammates. So we're going to be looking at that. Now, if you want the safe options for relics and what to grind for a more general sense, you're going to be looking at Wuthering Snow because you are going to get that reduced damage taken, which is going to help Fush win when she's getting that redirected damage. Longevious, of course, because of max HP boost. Fleet of Ageless because you get max HP boost again and with attack percentage boost, which is going to be really nice for all allies. A lot of people can use that. And if not that, Broken Keel because you get the crit damage boost and you get the effect res boost, which you're going to get some from her traces. And you could also get some from light cones, depending on which one you use. So these are overall just really good options to use for the, her sets, a lot of them being the two piece sets. And then, of course, for the actual main stats, it's going to be HP chest, HP boost, HP or ERR rope. The reason you want to go energy recharge rope is because you do want that ult as much as you can. That way you're able to get those stacks that you need to be able to reverse that HP. And with the substats of break effect, HP, and effect res, like I said, you do want her to be very slow just so that she's able to keep her field up for a lot longer with all the units that are going to be able to go out and use the field to its max potential. Now for my build and what I think is the best build for Fu Xuan is going to be Healer Fu Xuan and it's going to be using Longevious, Wandering Cloud and with those being said it's going to give you max HP and outgoing healing and then for the planar ornaments, Fleet of Ageless. I use outgoing healing chest, speed boots, HP orb, ERR rope. Now the outgoing healing chest and also wandering cloud set both give outgoing healing, which in my honest opinion, I do think that's going to help your team sustain a lot longer and a lot more, especially with you being able to have such a minuscule heal in your traces. This is going to bump it up and actually get it to the point where you're healing more than what you're taking. And I think this is just overall the most sustainable build and what build I like the most on Fu Xuan. I'm pretty sure there's more builds in regards to helping Fu Xuan last longer or helping her take least amount of damage as a sustain unit which that is really nice i just overall think as a healer a potential healer that she can actually do really good with this and last longer in fights because i think she heals a lot more than what you're taking in and remember the footage i have in the background these are level 60s fighting level 90s and being basically back up to full health through her ultimate which is absolutely insane now think about it being level 80 versus a level 90 you're going to be taking a lot less damage and not only that you'll be able to stay at full health more longer i just think the overall opinion on Healer Fu Xuan is just a lot better than what I would put out as another build. And with this, I'm going to be using, like I said, outgoing healing chest, which of course I already explained. Speed boots because you do want her to ult as much as you can. That way you're able to get the stacks for her HP reversal. And not only that, so that you're able to heal as well with Fu Xuan. HP orb, of course, to give her max HP. And then ER rope, you want to make sure she gets her ultimate again. Like I said, you want her to be able to get her ultimate quick so you're able to heal basically the gist of the build. And then with HP effect rest and break effect sub stats as well. Remember, the ultimate benefiting from break effect is going to be really nice because she is quantum. Now, talking about this build, I really do love it because it helps you heal more than you take. That's just the best way to build Fu Xuan. You can build her DPS, you can build her in other ways, but I think, in my honest opinion, this is the best build. Now, for the team, she's really a universal unit that can be used with anyone. Create rate boost makes her viable with any DPS. Her tankiness helps with the whole team out. And then not only that, characters like Jing Yuan really get a massive help with that CC immunity helping his Lightning Lord out. And not only that, giving him the crit rate boost so that he's able to ditch the crit rate chest and be able to use crit damage chest with his crit damage light cone. He's going to be doing so much more damage. I can't wait to test that out. She just provides a lot of aspects to the team with all the buffs that she gives. She's just a really good universal option for sustain. There's not really many people who gain a disadvantage because of her, basically because of how much she does. There's only three units that I guess you could say are a con to what she can do, which is Blade, Clara, and Yanqing. Blade and Clara are not going to like Fu Xuan a little bit just because of the taunt value. They're not going to get hit as much as Fu Xuan would be. So taking away those hits from Blade, taking away those hits from Clara, it really diminishes their DPS. But overall, giving max HP to Blade is going to make them do a little bit more damage. And the Clara, she just won't be taking any damage if she does get hit. And you can use her ultimate to provide taunt to yourself. So those are workarounds to using Fu Xuan on those teams. And then Yanqing, he's the only person, I guess you could say, that provides a negative when working with Fu Xuan. Just because Yanqing really wants a character like Japard or Fire MC or someone that can take Taunt away for sure, just so that he's able to keep his passive up with this Soul Steel Sync that he gets all his crit damage, his crit rate, his damage from. 
that's the only reason he's not going to be working well with Fu Xuan. But 100%, you can still probably work around with having Yanqing on the team. She's just an overall really nice universal unit and a very nice sustain unit overall. I think this character is absolutely cracked with how much she gives with the boost to your certain stats, CC immunity, healing, all these type of things. I just think she's an absolutely amazing character. Her and Luocha are going to be at the top of the mountain when it comes to sustain units. But other than that, that's going to be this guide for Fu Xuan. I appreciate every single one of y'all for watching all the way to the end of the video. Make sure to leave a sub, like, and comment, all that type of stuff. Let me know what you think about Healer Fu Xuan because I think, in all honesty, this is the best build possible for her. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the next one, and peace.